Dude, where is my hat? Where did I put it? Mom, where's my hat? What do you mean, what hat? My Chaos Coaching hat. Where is it? Come on, dude. I found it. My offensive and defensive ebooks are now available over on HotRock.Tips. If you guys are looking to win more games than Madden 20, that's the place to be. And don't forget, use code CHAOS for 10% off at checkout. What's good, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Chaos Coaching. And if you guys have not seen them before, it's basically where I go in depth on all my thought process, take you guys through why I'm doing what I'm doing, why I called a certain play, why I called a certain coverage shell, why I made a certain adjustment. All those things, that's what's covered in today. Now, I heard you guys complaining in the past. You guys have said, oh, you're not going in depth enough. You're not breaking down enough. Message is heard. I'm going to be going super in depth today. I'm going to be breaking down every single little thing that I do. Now, it's going to be a lightly edited video. If you guys are all for the funny quips and the funny edits and all that stuff, if that's what you guys are interested in, that's much Jeopardy. That's Weekend League Pack and Play. Those are the videos for you. Today, this is for helping you guys improve on your Madden gameplay. Now, I'm not saying it won't be entertaining. Maybe it'll be a good game. Maybe I'll show you guys some, some cool things throughout the way. That could be fun for you guys. That could be entertaining. But it's not going to be a super edited video. It's going to be lightly broken. It's going to be lightly edited and highly broken down with my thought process, helping you guys improve as Madden players. Now, today's gameplay is going to be from mud head to head. I feel like I'm at the top rank in that. I could get a good gameplay for you guys, probably play a decent opponent that pretty much knows what he's doing and help you guys can get a really in-depth look. But however, if you guys are interested in weekly gameplay, I am going to be streaming tonight at around, mm, I'd say about 5 or 6 p.m. Eastern Time. Eastern Time. It's going to be right uh, right here. I'm going to put the Twitch right here, right here in this corner. That's where I'm going to put my Twitch. If you guys are interested in watching, if you guys want to see Weekend League, I'm going to be basically playing all my games today and tomorrow, which is Sunday. It's going to be finishing up the weekend. I haven't played Weekend League in a long time. And I need to get you guys a Weekend League pack and play. So I will be finishing this weekend. If you guys are interested in checking that out live, make sure you just come, come through. K underscore Aus 23. Now the first aspect of coaching is always your personnel, right? You got to know your players. At QB, we have Andrew Luck. Andrew Luck and Russell Wilson are the only two quarterbacks in the game that get escape artists and dash and dead eye. No other quarterbacks get that combination. Now you guys might be saying, oh, Vic and Lamar are faster. Yeah, they are. But if you're throwing on the run, those guys are going to overthrow a lot for you. I'm telling you right now, and you don't want that. A lot of the times this game, pressure's going to come. You can't set your feet and throw. You got to be able to throw on the run. And that's something Luck's going to do for you. He's going to do a great job. And I pick him over Russell just because he has a little bit better throwing stats. At running back, we have two really good guys. Um, we we run split close. You guys know that. So we have we have um, two juice running backs. We, we throw to both of them. We run with both of them. We need to have two solid players. So that's why we have those guys. And I like speed this year, especially because I'm actually usually on conservative. So I don't need to be trucking you and stiff arming you. I just need a lot of speed and guys that can break tackles on their own. A wide receiver, we're pretty juiced. We have Torrey Holt, Brandon Cooks, and the goon himself, Tyree Kill. At the outside guys, I have Tyree Kill and Brandon Cooks. Great speed, great deep route running. That's what I want for my crossing routes. Um, and then Torrey Holt is a little bit more of a route running position. And still like I still like having speed, so Torrey Holt's a really good option for that. At O-line, nothing too crazy here, guys. My O-line is actually not very good, as you see. I still have basically Zach Martin. But in my opinion... If you don't have abilities this year, whole line it really don't matter that much. So I haven't really spent the coin to upgrade them. However, if you do have abilities, it matters. So Jordan Gross has all day an edge protector, and so does Bruce Mass Bruce Matthews. And the reason why he's out of position is because I want him at tackle, but you can still get his ability activated if you have him at backup. So both are activated with all day and edge protector. I from what I figured out, that two combination actually works at stopping the, the edge rushing abilities. And I don't need wide receiver abilities, guys. I get good routes in my formation. I just need the guys to be good receivers. I don't need to put anything on them. So I don't need to waste abilities on them. So I put them on my tackles, give myself some time in the pocket, help me to be able to make throws. On the defensive side of the ball, we have we have good we have a good team. We have a good team. So we have Troy Palomalu. Let's get these pictures. I, I cannot stand when the pictures are in it. It really, really irks me. So you have to go into the thing and get the pictures back. So we have Troy Palomalu. I wish I had his full one. But this, this guy fights. This guy makes plays on the ball. He's a very, very good player. Awesome guy to have in your team. Even if you can't afford the main one, I'd say get this power up. 
I just got Pat Tillman the other day. Super happy to have him. So we have two really good safeties at the middle linebacker position. We have about the two, probably the two best ones you can get. Ray Lewis, great player. I have him activated. I have a lot of stuff on him. So let's just go on, let's click in and go on him and see what we have on him. But he gets a lot. He's one of the few linebackers this year that actually gets um, like supreme tackler, enforcer, secure tackler. He gets all of it. So I have secure, enforcer, and run stopper on him. So he's going to make his tackles with secure. He's going to crush you with enforcer. And he's going to have run stopper. So he's going to get off the blocks quicker and make plays on the running back. So those are the three things that he has. Not many other middle linebackers have that. That's why you need yourself a Ray Lewis. He's going to be better than Patrick Willis just because of the abilities he gets. Now, if you're not activating him, Patrick Willis is probably going to do about the same thing. But Ray Lewis is still cheaper. So definitely the guy I would get. Now, my D-line isn't the greatest. It looks really weak, right? Well, the reason being is because Reggie White's my DT, so he's solid. And then my two edge rushers are Lawrence Taylor and Von Miller. I don't really use these D-linemen outside of, like, three for odd run defense. And they'll do the job. It, it, the run defense this year, in my opinion, is really about having really good linebackers and really good safeties. It's not about your D-line. So these guys will do. And then at corner, four decent ones. We have Willie Brown. I refuse to get rid of him because he's just a super, super good player. Uh, he always fights for me. Desmond Trufant, Darius Slay, and then power up Deion Sanders, who I'm likely going to be getting the full version of very, very soon. So that's the team, guys. Quickly going over to the playbooks before we jump into the video. Um, you guys know, Dolphins offense for the split close, Jets defense. Both of these are over on HotRod.tips. If you guys want my full schemes, now I'm going to be going in depth with you guys today, but I can't give you guys everything. That stuff is reserved for the people over on Hot Route. So if you guys are interested in my full schemes, I don't hold anything back. And I really don't. If you guys are on the site, you guys know I don't hold anything back. You guys get everything that I give. So Dolphins offense, Jets defense, Hot Route tips. Let's get into the game. Well, guys, it looks like we're going to have to pivot. I've been trying to get you guys a mud head-to-head -head game, so it would definitely be competitive since I'm at the highest rank. But as you guys can see, we have three disconnect games. I got two wins and a loss. I don't know what's going on, but I cannot get a game. I literally just can't get a game. So we're going to go into Weekend League and just hope our opponent's decent enough to make this a good coaching video. All right, guys. So it's always nice to start with a kickoff. I'm sure you guys had that in your settings. Most of you guys, are, I'm sure, would do that. If you guys don't go to the home screen, change your first option to kick. But the second option is also important. Make sure you guys change that to against wind. That way, in the fourth quarter, when you go, when you have to go for a field goal, the wind's on your side. Secondly, guys, make sure your personnel is right. Make sure you guys always do your subs, making sure you guys have all the right guys in the right spot. Your personnel is so important this year, making sure you have the right players so that you don't want to waste guys in the wrong position. Like a Lawrence Taylor is not going to be good at a coverage linebacker spot, you know what I mean? So you just want to make sure you guys have the right spots, and then you'll be good to go. Also, another important thing this year, guys, making sure you match personnel with, with the right personnel. This is one of the first years in a long time where if they come out an I form or single back, you better not be in dime. You better not be in nickel. You're going to get toted on. Make sure you're matching 3-4, three, 4-3 four, four, three against an I form or a single back. If he's coming out and gun split close, something I'm going to note right away is he can audible down to I form and strong if he wants to. That's something I'll note. Also something I'll note, just knowing the good routes. That's, that's one of the most important things, knowing the good routes in a formation. So that's big time. But I know the good routes from Split Close are the crosser, the baby post, and then the deep post. He moved down to trips tight end. I know in trips tight end, they have two crossing routes from both circle and triangle. So I'm actually going to cross man circle here, or B, whichever one you want to call it, whatever console you play. So here it is. This is the PA shot wheel. We're on every crosser. We're on everything. We get a safety. Works out well. Now, guys, I like to play on conservative. That's just my personal way of playing. I wouldn't recommend any of you guys do it. Um, to be honest, this year the juke moves, trucks, stiff arms are so good that you should probably be using them. But me personally, I don't just because I'm a passer. I'm a pass a lot. My running backs and my receivers, when they get the ball, are usually going to be falling down in the possession catch or just racking and trying to speed to the end zone. So I don't need the juke moves, so I tend not to use them. It's in 3 4 odd. He's he sent 7 there. I actually had a touchdown. When you see 3 4 odd this year against the pass, they're usually going to be sending seven or eight or just sending a ton at you. They're not going to be able to do much outside of that. It's tough to play coverage against a gun formation out of these. So, again, he's pinching his linebackers. He's pinching his line. I'm expecting him to blitz seven once again. That was really good defense. I don't even know what he did there, but somehow he crossed, man. That was, that was good D. 
just so you guys can see it i'm going back and forth letting my guys get their energy back now you don't have to go back and forth in your formation like that you can just sit there the reason why i go back and forth is so the second that my guys are ready to go i can come out of the huddle i don't want to waste any time basically just what i'm doing is as soon as i can come out of the huddle i will so i'm going back and forth going as quick as possible right there i knew he was sending a lot uh play man to man since he's a man coverage i know a hitch is going to beat it especially from a backed off coverage get a free eight yards i know he's going to cover zero again i'm just gonna do a couple hitches here make sure i just take whichever one he doesn't use her he went left i throw right easy money now that i have a fresh set of downs i'm gonna try to bomb him deep have a first and ten here i know i can pick up his pressure and we got him see that first and ten <laughs> Well, dashing dead eye doesn't work. Maybe I forgot to activate luck. I don't know, but I don't know how I missed that. Basically what I did there was just I just knew 90 deep route running was gonna beat the guy deep. And it worked perfectly, luck just didn't make the throw, which is okay. Just take off here, he didn't spy. If you're not gonna spy guys with escape artists, I probably should've slid, but if you're not gonna spy guys with escape artists, you can get out of the pocket so easily this year. That deep ball that we threw, we're gonna go back to that later. That's something that we have in our back pocket that we knew worked and we know we can go back to later. But before that, we can just go to our plays that we also know are going to work. We've got a lot of plays for cover zero, guys. If someone's going to sit in cover zero like this, you have to have a scheme for it. You have to know what routes are going to beat it. I know my crossing routes are going to beat it. I know my slants are going to beat it. I know my posts are going to beat it. I know my hitches are going to beat it. You need to know what routes you have in your scheme to beat cover zero this year. Otherwise, you're going to struggle. Again, he's going back to the split close. I know post routes, crossing routes, I know they're there. And I know he has some corner routes, too. So I just have to know what's going to be coming and know what my user needs to guard and what zones aren't going to cover for me. We're hollering. I mean, we're just hollering. If you guys want that blitz, hot rod dot tips. I can't give that one away. If you want that blitz, hot rod dot tips. Just coming out and gun bunch now. Just noting the, the just noting the good routes out of this. Basically, he has good corner routes from his bunch side. He's got really good post routes on both sides. And you just got to note that. We get another sack. Just a covered sack. That's not even a screen. That's just a covered sack. Everything is guarded. He's probably going to quit out the game. If he quits out, we'll get another one. Hope he doesn't quit out, though. All right, he quit out. We'll get another one. We'll get another one in. So I actually just matched up with one of the guys that I disconnected and went head-to-head -head with. This is crazy. I don't know I don't know what the irony is. You guys can even go back and check it from when I showed it. I literally just played this kid in one head-to-head -head trying to record this video for you guys. He disconnected, and now we're going to be recording it again. So there's no real need to really go through the beginning game antics that I went through last game, uh, or since, what you're supposed to be doing. Basically, it's just the same thing, guys. Setting up your personnel and getting a feel-out drive. These first couple drives are always feel-out drives. You want to see what your opponent's capable of, what he likes to do. And you can kind of go from there about how you're going to play defense for the rest of the game. So he's coming out on this pistol. Not many people run pistol. I don't really know what to do against it. I'm going to treat it like a shotgun and run uh, and run my big dime. But if he starts to tote on me, I'm not going to be afraid to go to a lower set like a nickel or a 3-4 or 4-3. So he didn't have much success with that first run. Just going to be comfortable in one 4 6 until he starts to tote on me. See what happens here. See what pass he's got out of it, too. I, I was telling you guys last video, it's important to know what important routes you have on the field. And apparently, this guy's just got a streak or a fade. He doesn't, he doesn't have any routes. Um, so when they're in an unfamiliar formation, you need to quickly pick up on what routes they like to throw. And then the, for those future drives, you can be comfortable stopping them. Whereas you probably wouldn't have been before if, you, if you've never seen the routes before. So, Brandon Ball, third and 11. So his, his three plays have been... A run, run, and a pass with a one guy going out. So he clearly isn't comfortable passing the ball. I just need to make, my, make sure my run defense is on point. Again, another weird formation. He's in gun wing. Not really sure what he's going to be coming out in. We're just going to give him time. Let him show what he wants. And nothing's really doing right there. So just like the defensive side of the ball, another feel out drive. Early on, I just like to go to the plays that I'm comfortable running that I know are going to do a good job against most coverages. And then just feel out what coverage he's going to stay in for the most of the game, what adjustments he's making, and stuff of that nature. Just got two deep safety look. Could be cover two, could be cover four. Looks like cover four. Just motion out that out route. Take my free game. I'm in the red zone now, so I'm going to my favorite red zone play. Can't give you guys the exact setup for it and why it works, but something I do want you guys to know that you guys absolutely need a good red zone play. First and go from the one, guys. It's Madden 20. Run the ball. Run the ball. If they blow it up, they won't blow it up four times in a row. Just run the ball, get the ball in the end zone. There's no need to pass inside the five in Madden 20. So going back to this gun wing now, guys. I was aggressive on that fourth down, but he did have a streak deep, and I noticed that as he got sacked, so I don't want to be too aggressive here. And, of course. Oh, my gosh. Honestly, I'm not mad at that. That's not really, that's not really uh, a mistake on my part as far as adjustment-wise. Really, all that was was I'm, a trying, I'm trying to adjust RB 
And if you guys know, if you're adjusting RB as they hike, they go for the strip sack, uh, little strip animation. And of course it gets me falling for as the streak runs right by me. I'm not mad at that. I'm not tripping on that at all. Uh, sometimes your opponent's going to score, but it's not really going to worry you. It's not something you really need to take into account. That's really just a streak that I got beat deep on just trying to make an adjustment. I'll make sure to adjust quicker next time and not give that up. Back on offense here, he showed me a lot of cover three. And based on his shell type here, again, it looks like it's going to be a cover three. Cover three, if you're going to sit in that against me, I'm going to run I'm going to run a lot of stuff to the sidelines with my, with my out routes and flats and stuff because you're going to have your guys compressed in. But I'm also going to run... Just plays that I know can get over top of those clouds because cloud flats and curl flats just don't play well from cover three. So like crossing routes, posts, they're gonna get it over those clouds and, and purples really, really well. So that's something you need to note. So again, like right here, perfect spot, gets over the zones and you get a nice little completion. Man, guys, you actually never realize how hard it is to talk the entire game while you're trying to actually make reads and do certain things. It's actually super difficult. Again, guys, he's, if he's gonna sit in cover three and cover four, just attack those sidelines. Make sure he has to move those guys out. Make him make an extra adjustment. Take the time to move his players out there. So he has some in me, so I can send five out. And I'd like to think that he's going to get out of this cover three and cover four shell soon because they've just been abusing it. I think he'd go to a cover two soon. And there it is. That's the cover two. We had the read we wanted. We just got, uh, we got shed sacked. Maybe that's a little bit of bad pocket by me. I might have stepped backwards. So he's going to cover two back-to-back -back plays. I'm going to go back to this cover two beta that I felt comfortable with. Bam, right in that pocket. Very dicey. But it's fourth down, you gotta throw something. I felt like I felt like I was comfortable with that read. Um, I felt like I was gonna get it over him this year. You don't get great animations. Maybe that could have been a pick. But I did feel like it against the cover two, I had that look that I liked before. When I got sacked, I went back to it. I was able to create a completion now. It was very possible that play might not have worked out for me. I could have easily have thrown a pick or an incompletion. But at the end of the day, I liked that look that I got earlier from it, so I went back to it. You gotta go to your best players on fourth down. Don't hold anything back when you need to convert a play. Right there, nice little nice little crossing routes to get over that cloud. Again, guys, I can't stress enough. It's very important to have your favorite red zone plays that you can go to and you can have success with down at the red zone because if you don't have a good pass and play down here, it can be very, very tight from that 10 to 15 area. Now, he went to goal line. One of the great things about split close is that you can actually audible out of it and go uh, audible out of I-form and go back to the split close. So I'm just going to run an out route here with a hitch. Throw my hitch, easy touchdown. That's the great thing about split close, guys. You can audible from split close all the way up to I form and strong, and you can audible down. It's really nice. If they try to come out and go on like that, I have no problem passing the ball. Surprisingly, he's not coming out in that gun wing that he just had success with, but I still expect him to, when he's in this, I expect him to run the ball every time, but he'll go back to that gun wing since he got a touchdown out of it, and when he does, I'll be ready for it. It was just a fluky touchdown before where I, I got caught stripping when I didn't. I didn't need to give up a streak touchdown right there, so. I expect him to go back to it, but not worried about it. So he showed the pass there. Nice play. So he attacked the sideline there. He did an out route against the cover three. I'm just gonna make sure I move out. Uh, I move out my safety now. Well, quick liked it. When you're under two minutes, you don't have to wait the five seconds when you go when you go no huddle. So that's something you have to know. When when somebody's going no huddle under, under the two minutes, they can hike the ball very, very fast. So you better get those adjustments in. And I'm struggling to do so at the moment. Again, guys, I know this isn't the most exciting video. Um, those are going to be saved for my other series. I, this is for helping you guys. And I really, I hope I'm doing a good job of helping you guys. I'm, I'm trying to do the best I can to speak and play. It's not easy. It's not easy to make sure I'm making all the right adjustments and doing the right things while, while just talking my, I feel like I'm talking to your guys' ear off to be completely honest with you, but you guys said I wasn't in depth enough before, so I'm trying to do better. Hopefully I guys am. Hopefully I am. So quarterback keeper option. Holy crap. I mean, this guy's just going to different things I've never seen before. Well, so much for that speech. So the two-minute drill is going to be different no matter what mode you're in. I'm in Mutt or Weekend League right now, and there's no runoff. If you're in salary cap, you're in regs, um, Mutt drafts, the runoff is going to happen when you go no huddle. But since you're in Weekend League, I can go no huddle without any worry of the clock running off. So if I get caught in bounds, I'm obviously going to no huddle. But the first option is always to get out of bounds. So a couple crossing routes here. I'm not worried about getting stuck in bounds. He gives me time. He gave me Tyreek Hill. There, I'm gonna call my timeout on a sack. I like to make sure I get a good play in. Um, if I got if I had caught a pass, 15 yards or whatever, I probably would have went no huddle. But since it was a sack, you want to make sure you get your right play in the next time. You don't want to mess around and and let him uh, and let him get you in a bad situation. You don't want to be in where you're gonna have to punt. So 
take my three yards right there. Again, guys, blew another time out there. I want to make sure I get this first down before I start going to my no huddle because I don't want to. I don't want to be in a situation where I can't can't get a first down. You want to get your best plays out there. And Tyreek Hill should burn him right here, and he does. Guys, Tyreek Hill is so good. Get yourself a Tyreek Hill. Our strategy worked out for us there too. I said I wanted to call timeouts to make sure I got my right plays in, and we ended up picking a big chunk, and now we're in field goal range. Give us another dot. Get out of bounds again. Get out of bounds again. Perfect scenario. Perfect scenario. Now we have a chance to get seven. Now the red zone gets tight. I'm going to try to fit in the pass here to this post. Hopefully I have enough space to do so. Oh, he gave me the running back. I'll take that. Call my timeout here. Something I will note here. If I have to take a sack, I can. I can just go no huddle spike. Should be a touchdown. Should be a touchdown. Let's go, man. So not a bad half at all. Definitely, definitely probably shouldn't have given up those two touchdowns. We gave him two free ones. One on a run, one on a pass. But again, just trying to get comfortable with what he's doing. That first half, he ran a lot of different things I hadn't seen before. Tough to stop things that you haven't seen, but once you get a feel for it, which is what I feel like I did, the second half should go a lot smoother. We'll see how it goes. Just got to be ready for everything that he can do out of each formation. More formation, excuse me. He liked this cover two to end the half, so we'll see if he sticks in that. He did not. If they do that, guys, work the sidelines. Make them move those guys out. I'm going to guess he's in cover two here just because he's been having more success with that than he has the cover three. And I was right. We'll see if he sticks in this cover two after I've been dotting him. He did. Let's take off. Oh, that's a bad hit to take. Yikes. I was trying to slide, guys. I was trying to slide, but I was a little greedy there. I wanted the first down. Ah, that sucks. He's obviously been giving me trouble with this option, so I'm gonna I'm gonna try to set up more run defense here. I got out of one uh, big dime. Dang, man. This I don't know what it is. They keep playing the quarterback. Oh, now he's I'm struggling against this pistol. I'm not even gonna lie. I'm struggling against it. I don't know what to do. He's going to this gun wing. I'm ready for that streak that he did before. There's no way I give that up here. We're on that. Good D, boy. So this is really the spot in the game where you can basically end it. You can go down, take a lot of clock, and get seven and go up two possessions. So I'm gonna start off with a run here. I wanna take a lot of clock. I wanna make sure that I take as much clock as possible while going up two possessions. And he basically doesn't have time to come back. Now, additionally, I'm not gonna allow him to sit in this weak dollar set or, yeah, I believe it's dollar. I'm not gonna allow him to sit in this. There's, if he's gonna stay in this formation, I'm gonna run dive to the freaking end of the game. I'm just literally gonna spam it. He's not gonna sit in dollar against me. So it worked. We got him down to a nickel set now, but I still don't think nickel's gonna do a good job of stopping my run. So I'm gonna make sure this gets to the end of the quarter. And again, he's not, if he's not gonna, if he's not, oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. That was a conservative too. I'm on conservative. Wow. Okay. Well, that that did not go how I planned it. Wow. Both of those fumbles. I don't think I fumbled either of those if I was on conservative. I told you guys in the first game, I play on conservative. Now, it's just going to be, we need to get seven at all cost drive. So, but if he's going to go on this dollar, I will go to this dive. He, I'm not going to let him sit in this. Just no chance. Yeah. 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 If you're going to sit in this, bro, that's GG's. Yeah. That's, that's what I'm talking about, guys. Do not let someone sit in a weak set like that if you have the capability of running the ball. If your formation can run it, you go to that run. I'm comfortable with this defense. I'm comfortable with it. I'm comfortable with it. Smack him! Where's my fumble bag? You've got to be kidding me. You've got to be kidding me on that. So that delay game actually made me a lot less worried about the run. Now I just have to worry about the pass. I'm going to make sure not to give up a free touchdown to this wing. Yeah, we're on everything. We're on everything. Pick that. Finish the game off. Finish the game off. Holy crap, dude. If he caught that, I would have spazzed. He's been sending five out of this. I'm going to send a lot of pressure here. A lot of pressure without giving up a touchdown. We're sending the whole team. I'm going to make him make a quick read. I think he's going to send everybody out the way he's been doing it. So he hasn't showed any different on his wing. I should be fine sending seven here and just make sure I take away this first read and he should get sacked. But we'll see. He actually blocked. We're on that. <gasps> wow. Sack. Let's go, boy. I really have not played a single person all year doing this option stuff. I really have no idea how to guard this thing. Hopefully, if he runs it again, we're ready for it. What's he doing? Come on. There's no way he listens to the two minute. Thank you. Oh, my goodness. Where's my fumble bag? Whoever has triple option defense, please fly it in the comment section because I got nothing for him. I've got nothing for him. Pick that. Dude, come on. The two minute thing, it's the two minute thing. You can hike the ball so much faster. You can't even set up, dude. It's impossible to set up run D. I changed up my run defense a little bit. The other one clearly wasn't doing that well. So if something's not doing well, guys, don't be, don't be a prisoner at the moment and just keep doing it. Go to something that works. 
Pick the game and end it. Pick it and end it. Oh my gosh, how am I not in bounds? He made the pitch. Oh, great freaking tackle. He's in the scum wing. I'm ready for the streak touchdown. Oh my gosh! Uh, it was Reggie White, man. It was Reggie White. I can't complain. Holy crap. Don't need to do anything crazy here, guys. All I need to do, lurk on my linebacker, have my deep blues out there. You guys see it. I got tons of coverage. Don't give up anything. Don't give up anything. I'm taking the sidelines myself. We're on everything. Oh, my gosh. I thought I was about to get over my cloud. G freaking G, man. Heck of a game, guys. I hope I did a better job of coaching. You guys told me I wasn't doing my job before. That hurt? No, I'm just kidding, guys. I appreciate the constructive criticism. I hope this was better for you guys. I hope this guys helped. I hope this helped you. I hope you guys learned from it. And I hope you guys enjoyed the gameplay. I mean, it ended up being a pretty decent game. That triple option was freaking killing me. So, shout out to you guys, man. If you guys enjoyed it, like, comment, subscribe. That's it for your boy. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Take it easy. Peace.